Welcome to Story Lab. This week, we're celebrating Christmas while we take a look at the story of some shepherds working the night shift who got the surprise of their lives. Hey, I'm Amaya. And I'm Zeke. And we're talking about Christmas, which is celebrating Jesus, God's greatest gift. I've been celebrating all week. Ah. Okay, I got the message. <laughs> I got the message too. In fact, I want to ask you, how many ways can you send a message? Well, there's texting, email, phone call, social media. Okay, but how would you send an important message without a phone or a computer? Um, a letter? Or Morse code. <laughs> That was... I love cheese? Actually, that was... How are you? Oh, I'm... <laughs> Pick a number. Three. One, two, three. Three? <laughs> oh, I'm great. The story before the story. Today, we're in the third book of the New Testament. Luke. But before Luke, in the very beginning, out of love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to bless the whole world through the Israelites, but over and over, God's people would run to God and then pull away, just like a yo-yo. Then foreign nations invaded and captured the Israelites. They must have wondered if God still loved them and had a plan for them. God spoke through prophets about the great rescuer God was sent. And at last, after hundreds of years, God sent a tiny baby to be born in the small town of Bethlehem, God's very own son, Jesus. Which is where our story starts. And go! Hey everyone. Hey, hey Brian. Brian. Jesus is born. <laughs> it's the most amazing news ever. But even though the birth of God's son was going to change the entire world, well, the world didn't know about it yet. The town of Bethlehem lay sleeping. Shh, the streets were quiet. But in the fields outside town, some shepherds were still awake, keeping watch over their flocks of sheep. Now, if you're gonna announce the birth of a king, you send a herald straight to the big cities and, and high up leaders, right? You let the most important people know first. Well, these shepherds were the opposite of important. In fact, they were considered nobodies, probably really sweaty and smelly from living outside and wrangling stubborn sheep. Ah. They were all huddled around the fire trying to stay warm, <sighs> trying to stay awake. Perhaps they were even dozing off when suddenly, a brilliant angel from God appeared before them. The shepherds were terrified, ready to run for their lives. But the angel said, do not be afraid. I bring you good news. It will bring great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Oh, uh, the town of David? That's what people called Bethlehem because it's where King David had grown up hundreds of years before. Here is how you will know I am telling you the truth. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. The shepherds were still trying to understand this mind-blowing news when an epic angel choir from heaven showed up. The entire sky lit up as they sang for joy. May glory be given to God in the highest heaven and may peace be given to those he is pleased with on earth. Then, just as swiftly as they had arrived, the angels left. The night was dark and still again. <laughs> but you can bet those shepherds were wide awake now. What just happened? Your mind blown. Can you believe God just told us? We gotta go to Bethlehem. Oh, we gotta see this for ourselves. I'll raise you. Can you imagine? The shepherds were giddy with excitement and filled with wild curiosity. They took off across the fields, heading straight for Bethlehem. There, they found the place where a light still glowed. Mary and Joseph were exhausted, but 
they welcomed the first visitors to see their brand new baby. These rugged shepherds gathered around in awe. He's just like a newborn lamb. As night turned to day, the shepherds finally left to return to the fields. They were so filled with joy that they shouted out the news to everyone they met. God has sent a savior. Oh, he's just a tiny baby now, but he, he's going to be king. A whole bunch of angels came to tell us. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Before long, everyone in town heard the incredible news. And in the middle of all the celebration, Mary kept everything in her heart like a secret treasure. The end. For now. Man, I want to hear an angel choir. Mm -mm, you'd be terrified. Angels always have to say, do not be afraid before they show up. <laughs> It's so cool that the shepherds got to find out first. Yeah, it was God's way of making it clear that Jesus is not just for people who are rich and famous. Jesus came for everybody, all of us. So what's our part in the story? Well, first of all, don't miss this. Jesus came to earth for you. As he grew up, he showed us what God is like. He showed us how to love God, how to love others. And then he laid down his life to take on the sin and brokenness of the world. And when God raised Jesus to life, death was defeated. Now anyone who chooses to follow Jesus, you, me, anyone, anywhere across time, can be with God forever. That amazing news is for everyone. It's for your mom and your dad and your baby sister and your grandma. And your friends and your teachers. It's for your dentist. <laughs> and for the person who brings deliveries to your house. It's for your neighbor next door and for kids living on the other side of the world. Oh, that calls for a megaphone. Do we have a megaphone? Enthusiasm is great, but you can share the news in your normal voice too. I am on it. See you next time. See you next year. Bye, Bye Brian. Brian. So here's the thing. The good news is for everyone.